Hello everyone, it's Captain Sensible here with another fragrance review. So today we're going to be looking at Helmut Lang Eau de Cologne by Karl Lagerfeld. This one was released in 1983 and the perfumer was Mark Armand. Their notes on this fragrance are bergamot, sandalwood and fingers. Uh, a very smooth, fresh fragrance. I like this one and my wife likes it too. Now, unfortunately, I'm not really, uh, when my wife's not really speaking to me at the moment. Um, we, we, I had a bit of a bad day yesterday. I, I went shopping to the supermarket, parked the car and uh, I, I, when I came out with my, my shopping, uh, there was this bloke, he'd broken into the car, he'd smashed the window and uh, he, he, I was too late. He'd, I just saw him driving off into the distance so I told I went I, I, I walked home I, I walked home and I told my wife about it and she said well uh, oh that's terrible I said don't worry I know they're gonna catch him she said oh that's good did, did you see what he looked like then I said no she said oh well, did, did you see which way he drove off I said well no not really she said well, well I mean did, did, did he drop a weapon on the floor that he'd broken the window with maybe there's some fingerprints I said well no she said well how the hell are they gonna find him then I said I wrote down his license plate number. Hello and welcome back to everybody out there in the smelly army. So today we're going to be having a look at a subject that is kind of one of my favourites and that's the subject of discontinued or at least reformulated fragrances, vintage fragrances that uh, you can't get anymore. In this video I'm going to look at a few that are not terribly terribly old, we're not going right back to the 60s, 70s or even the 80s with these, a lot of them are 21st century fragrances so it should be a really fun list to look at. Uh, before we get into that don't forget if you'd like to join up to the smelly army private members club over on Patreon there's a link in the description for you to go ahead and do that it costs you just two dollars a month and you get an extra video from me every week we're building a really nice community lots of interaction in there and there's tons of videos already uploaded including one of the more recent ones which was my top five niche fragrances all kinds of you know dozens of other old videos that you can sign up and watch straight away as soon as you join up so i'd love to see you in there back to the topic in hand today then so discontinued fragrances let's get stuck into it first up then we're going to go with helmet lang Eau de Cologne. This was a 2000 release. Now this one has actually been reissued and I think there's a new version still available to buy now but I've got the older formula first released in the year 2000 and this is a really really beautiful fresh fragrance. I'll give you the note listing actually for this one before I say any more. So the top notes are rosemary and lavender. In the mid you've got jasmine, heliotrope and lily of the valley plus rose and the base notes are sandalwood, patchouli, musk and cedar. Now uh, I, I'm going to use some of the reviews that I've seen on base notes to help me here a little bit because I thought some people captured it quite well. Somebody mentioned creamy sherbet I think which is a really good description. There isn't even a lemon note listed but there is a, a definite citrusy feel for me about the fragrance. However it's far from a simple citrus aromatic. Other people have mentioned a fresh white laundry and a kind of minimalist a minimalist feel about the fragrance. So it sort of reimagines the Eau de Cologne style, uh, not to just be a citrusy 4711 Neroli Portofino style fragrance, but something a little bit more creamy, a little bit more white feeling, uh, but it certainly has a, a citrus freshness in there. It reminds me actually a little bit of Dior's Cologne Blanche, one of their private blend uh, or private line series that you can't get anymore. I pick up on a subtle hint of almond which I really like that could come from the heliotrope which is a kind of sweet fragrance note that does get compared to the scent of almond in some ways. Definitely quite a few white florals could lean a bit feminine. I think it was originally marketed towards men but uh, yeah some people have said they don't feel that it's the most manly fragrance. Here's the old box. You've got to love the minimalist design and that's sort of in keeping with the very very crisp creamy milky freshness that this one evokes. I also get a passing similarity maybe with the very hard to find Dolce & Gabbana by man. It's got a, a sort of um, a smoothness about it, a, a semi barbershopish feel actually, although sort of a neo barbershop, which I think by man from Dolce & Gabbana from the late 90s also is. And uh, I, I, there is a, a sandalwood note in here, which both of them share, which is very, very pleasant as well. So really, really nice, fresh, creamy, citrus, almost a milky feel, which that's the similarity I get with the Cologne Blanche, but in a really, really good way. Very, very unique different to anything else out there, although some passing similarities to some other favourites. I think the perfumer is Maurice Roussel, 
great, great perfumer who also did Musk Ravageur. Um, the actual official thing in Fragrantica didn't say his name, but uh, other reviewers mentioned it. So I believe it's Moist Roussel. Superb stuff. Haven't tried the new version, but I have heard a couple of reviews or read them where they say that it's it's pretty darn good. So if you can't find a vintage one uh, like I did on eBay, the modern version may well be worth trying if you liked that description. So that was the first one. Let's move on to the next one. And it's something completely different now. This is a female fragrance, Midnight Poison from the House of Dior. I actually gave this to Claire from the Smurfy Girlie channel as a present a few months back. I was definitely I'm not sure if I wanted to actually give this away to anyone. I almost selfishly kept it for myself. But a lot of guys actually really like this one. And I have seen some perfumista guys who, who rock this one, who wear it too. So it's not just for the ladies. It's a 2007 release, a flanker to the very famous and ubiquitous Poison from Dior, of course. Very simple note listing, which just consists of bergamot, rose, uh, orange, patchouli, amber, and vanilla. Lots of contrasting reviews on this one. The name leads many people to say it's a sort of dark, gothic fragrance other reviewers are saying really it's more of a, a girly uh, floral type of fragrance but a, a lot of people do at least agree that it's very very unique and very very nice I pick up on a sort of red berry ish feel so red berries fruitiness definitely quite a hefty dose of florals and roses is one of them that you will pick up on and most people agree a strong patchouli element in this one I also get something that sort of reminds me of uh, a note evoking ivy and something just a little bit dark and resinous, maybe even a tiny bit gothic, but perhaps the packaging and the name is influencing me to think that way. It's, it's really difficult to tell. What is undeniable is that the fragrance has very, very good performance, very good longevity and a very heavy sillage in the air, and that it will get you noticed and most likely draw compliments from what I see from other people. Many people will feel that it does lean more to it, it's it got this kind of classic female perfume feel about it but there's something dark something compelling and something that i think means that a man maybe if you like your your dark woody resinous fragrances but you also enjoy floral notes maybe if you like your rose oud combinations it doesn't smell of oud particularly but it has something of that dark floral feel to me mixed with a sort of um appealing fruity sort of sensual fruitiness if that's a thing very very interesting fragrance very much talked about as one of the sought after ones uh, that's dis discontinued only after you know 13 years or so after it was released we, we now find that it's fetching very very high prices on ebay so look out for midnight poison let me know if you've tried that one i should have mentioned that the performance on helmet lang eau de cologne is just okay not particularly strong lovely smell i don't mind don't know if it's actually literally concentrated weekly like an eau de cologne or if it's more eau de toilette don't know but it's it's not a, an amazing performer i have to admit okay so that's two down we have three to go back to something that's uh, a bit more me maybe than dior midnight poison although i do really enjoy uh, that one i must say we've now got tom ford private blend italian cypress if you read reviews online on fragrantica and base notes this is one of the most highly regarded of the tom ford private blend series even people who are rather skeptical about that series uh, who find the prices a little bit inflated for those perfumes a lot of them recognize this as one of the ones that's really or at least was really worth shelling out the money for so italian cypress came back out back in 2008 i think the private blends launched either in 2007 or 2008 so it was in the very very early early days of tom ford releasing this exciting new niche line uh, the notes are very simply listed as citrus basil mint woody notes and cypress it gets a lot of comparison to halston z14 which i've never tried an old school masculine fragrance and also ralph lorenz polo green the original green ralph lauren polo so that gives you some idea it's a very green woody ferny type of fragrance it's a little less rugged than polo green some people call it a fougere fragrance officially i think it's not called a fougere i think it might be a woody aromatic these designations don't often mean an awful lot very nice herbal element very green herbal feel to this one perhaps ferny therefore maybe fougere-ish and a very very pleasant old school kind of masculine woodiness in the base of the scent definitely i think that this older formula from back then in the in the mid 2000s uh, we've got some 
oak moss, real oak moss in there, which is of course a very important fixative and gives this this sort of mossy, sort of bitter undertone to the fragrance. So if you like Polo Green by Ralph Lauren, but you find it a little bit rugged, if you've ever tried the vintage formula and loved it, and you want a slightly more refined version, really, really grown up retro style, sort of fougere meets Chypre, green, bitter and woody fragrance with a little bit of, of zesty, sort of almost minty freshness in there as well. Very, very pleasant indeed, very refined, very good performance on my vintage one. They reissued this as well very recently with an inflated price and a slightly different sort of all gold label. Uh, and again, I've heard that that's, they did a pretty good job of getting close. Probably the oak moss can't be used in the same way that it was in the original version. Usually when things get discontinued, there are two reasons it can happen. One, the obvious one, is that maybe they didn't sell that well. Profit is what it's all about. Uh, and the other one is perhaps that some or yeah, some of the ingredients became very difficult to find or were banned or uh, perhaps became very expensive, so it no longer became viable to produce it. Then uh, that may well have been the case with Italian Cypress, but they did reissue uh, it recently. Moving on then, next up. Gucci NV. I was really excited to add this to the collection recently. I think I've talked about it over on my Patreon group, but I don't think I've mentioned it on YouTube here. So Gucci NV for men, uh, back to the 21st century, I think for the first time in this list, and this was a 1998 release. Uh, the notes include, or uh, in fact, all of the notes are uh, mandarin, coriander, rosewood, ginger, lavender, rose, jasmine, carnation, carnation, sandalwood and cedar. This is lovely stuff and I, I, something about the bottle design I didn't think it, it doesn't really excite me that much but it was always one of these discontinued ones that you, you heard talked about quite a lot on YouTube from other reviewers. Um, so I was curious and then I stumbled across a bottle for a really good price. It's a sort of fresh masculine fragrance but it's also very very spicy uh, it has a semi barbershopish type of feel. Again, if you are familiar with Dolce & Gabbana's By Man, there is a similarity to that, I think. There's a certainly a, a very, very pleasant and often remarked upon sandalwood in, note in this one. The ginger in it is quite outstanding and I, I really pick up on that. I, I like the note of ginger in fragrances. I really like uh, Aqua de Palma's Colonia Intensa, which is also a fresh masculine scent with some ginger. And this has that going on in there too. You definitely pick up a bit of on the lavender, sort of various hard to define different woods in there, but I, I do maybe pick out that there's that sandalwood accord that I always enjoy in fragrances. If you like things like Chanel's Egoist, this is a slightly more zesty, maybe more youthful take on that but it does uh, overlap a little bit, maybe with Chanel Egoist, maybe with Byman from Dolce & Gabbana, but it's got a certain Gucci Envy magic of its own. Very, very sophisticated, slightly retro smelling now, again, I guess, and a, a cracking fragrance, often remarked upon as being a kind of a niche quality fragrance uh, by, by reviewers and you know, much better than it's quite low price, I think, when it originally came out. Now very hard to find and starting to command high prices. Let me know if you've tried Gucci MV for men. So we're on to my fifth and final choice in these five cracking discontinued fragrances. This one, probably the one of the less talked about ones of the five today, and this is Pal Zileri's Viaggio d'Africa. So, voyage to Africa, or voyage in Africa, I guess that means, uh, and a house that I haven't sampled many of, or, or just in passing a few in department stores. So this one, a, a lot to do with vetiver, the notes in this one. Uh, let's just give, we'll give you the whole note listing. 2010 release, now discontinued, so it didn't get long, I think by about 2015-16 they'd stopped making it. Uh, the notes listed are citruses, iris, jasmine, vetiver, guyacwood, cedar and tonka beans. It's very much compared to Bal d'Afrique by Bayredo, which would be it's still available, much more expensive than this was when it came out. And also vetiver tonka from Hermes, which I haven't tried. I have tried Bal d'Afrique and I guess I think there is a similarity, but I wouldn't say that, that one's a clone of the other. Uh, definitely the vetiver is a very prominent an important part of, the, part of the fragrance. It's a very earthy, almost smoky kind of vetiver. I also pick up on tons of hay-like creamy tonka, which is very, very pleasant. I would swear there's a bit of vanilla in there, which doesn't seem to be listed. And many people talk about a kind of creaminess and a coffee note in there, which again isn't listed. There's, there's some debate. Some people are describing it almost as a dark, smoky vetiver. Others as a semi-gourmand fragrance. I think it's a combination of the two. It's a vetiver 
gourmand hybrid, if that's a thing. Uh, I think that a good comparison actually is Oda Rochas by, uh, not Oda, sorry, Rochas Man, I mean, Rochas Man, a similar kind of fragrance, which again, semi gourmandish, kind of fresh at the same time, but has a sweetness and a sort of coffee esque accord, maybe a cappuccino thing. So, very, very nice for autumn and winter. Very sort of grown up, sophisticated twist on a semi gourmandish uh, kind of breakfast in a bottle type thing but I you know much nicer to me than things like Bond uh, number nine New Harlem which is a bit too uh, sweet and caramelish so yeah burnt sugar people always talk about with this one too I get that yeah, get the smokiness with the sweetness burnt sugar maybe yeah what does burnt sugar smell like I don't know but I, I kind of get what they mean so lovely stuff Viaggio d'Africa and um, performance on that one actually really good uh, yeah, the upper end of moderate to the lower end of very good, I would say. Italian Cypress, a really strong performer. Gucci MV Medium, and I mentioned the performance on the other two already. So hope that helps you guys. If you're in the hunt for vintage fragrances or discontinued ones, uh, it's a great fun game to play. eBay, usually the best place to find them. And let me know any of your favourite discontinued or vintage fra fragrances, either where we simply can't get them or you need maybe to get the vintage because they've ruined it with their reformulation. Thank you ever so much for watching, guys. Remember, join me in the next video. Check out the Patreon link in the description below and I'll see you very soon. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye.